Hello everybody! I hope you're having a great time. It's been such a long time since I've been able to do one of these videos, Skulls with Seth, and a great anniversary this last Friday just came about, and I really wanted to talk about this discovery and show you this skull, because it is a fascinating skull, it really is. So today we're going to be talking about Zinge also known as Zinjanthropus boisei, or Australopithecus uh, boisei. Now, the name changed a few times due to where this species was placed on the family tree or the braided stream, but we have always known that it is somewhere related, of course, to hominins and somewhere in our family line. And as you'll be able to see from this skull, you'll be able to understand why. Of course, this does not look human-like. It does not look like something you would expect to see walking down the street anytime soon. But this thing is extraordinarily special. Now, there's a few key things that I want you to look at and realize when looking at this guy. First of all is the brain size not very large. It's actually about half the size of a modern human brain, so about 700, 600 cc's. Uh, it's probably a little bit of an estimate for him, honestly. And then the next thing that I want everyone to notice is this long arch, this crest, going across the skull. This is called a sagittal crest and is shared with gorillas which is, of course, one of our close relatives. And what this is for is the chewing muscles would come from over here. They go up under the zygomatic arch and go all the way to the top of the skull and connect here. Now, what that allows is a very strong chewing force. The bite force must have been immensely strong for these creatures. And especially when you look at these molars, look how huge those teeth are. These creatures were not chewing meat, they were not chewing soft foods, they were eating roots and tubers and other nuts and very rough fibrous foods, which possibly is what led to their extinction, having such a limited diet that they could eat off of. But this creature lived for a good amount of time. If, unless I'm mistaken, they were around for about two million years. Um, now, Zinge goes by many names, goes by Zinge, of course, as I've mentioned, also known as Zingeanthropus boisei. Uh, Zinge is an old name for East Africa, and boisei acknowledges Charles Boise, who was a supporter of the Leakies during their long excavations. Now, this guy was discovered by Mary Leakey in 400 crushed pieces on July 17th, 1959. 400 crushed pieces. So she and Kamoya Kimu put these pieces together, amazingly, and got this. This is a fascinating skull. And you can see all of the suture lines, the sagittal crest I mentioned, we can see the frena magnum, knowing that this creature was bipedal by the placement of where the spine enters the skull. We know that they would have walked upright. And of course, there's so much to learn from these teeth. Those teeth are just absolutely massive. Now, more parts of this skeleton have been discovered since, although they have been pretty much what we would expect to see from a creature like this. While this animal is not directly related to modern Homo sapiens, it is somewhere on the braided stream of human evolution, and it played an important role. It would have lived around the same time as other hominins, such as Homo habilis, which means they could have looked at each other from across the plain, seen each other's eyes, and maybe even recognized themselves in them. Which to me is just one of the most fascinating things you can think of, is two different hominin species looking at each other, seeing each other, and just, it's something we can't imagine today. There's nothing we can say or do to compare.
And for those of you saying, oh, well, look at someone like a different race. Race is meaningless. There is no meaning to race in anthropology. And if anyone wants to argue, they can go argue with the AABA and the, the American Anthropological Bio... Um, ugh, excuse me. Excuse me. The American Association of Biological Anthropologists does not recognize race. It doesn't. No anthropologist should recognize race. We recognize species, and this is a different species. So when we're talking about different hominins, different species seeing each other, I'm not talking about someone from Africa seeing someone from Canada. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a concept we truly cannot fathom, because for as long as we can remember, not as long as our history, because there have been other hominins during our history as Homo sapiens, sapiens, is that we'll never understand. Our living memory does not include other species. But back to this guy, also known as Nutcracker Man because of those giant molars right here. We know that these bipedal hominids lived in Tanzania, in East Africa, and we know that he was walking around about 1.75 million years ago, as I mentioned. And the discovery of this guy is quite fun. It's interesting. So, Mary and Louis Leakey were searching in Olduvai Gorge, or Olduvai Gorge, depending on how you pronounce it, for nearly 30 years, looking for some sign of early hominin or something that would show the world that we came from Africa. They didn't find exactly what they were looking for, and they didn't find anything for a long time. But on July 17th, 1959, Lewis had a terrible fever and was abed, but Mary decided to go out in the field with her two Dalmatians. She was a huge fan of Dalmatians. And while she was excavating, she noticed a few teeth popping up out of the ground. And she ran and got Lewis. And he flew out of bed, the stories tell us, even though he was so sick. And when they went and excavated, they realized this was not an ancestor directly related to us because of the teeth. But that it was something extremely important in our family tree. And Lewis is quoted as saying that this was a priceless discovery and at the time became the remains of the earliest man ever found. Of course, a lot has changed since the 70s. So many more species have been discovered and this guy has been placed and replaced in different places on the family tree, but we know how important Zanthropus is because it shows us our past in a way that we could have become a completely different line of species where we had more robust features, such as a sagittal crest, where instead of we have gracile features where our skull is flat, it has a high vault, etc. This guy, there's almost no vaulting at all. His brain is completely flat with his brow ridges. Very, uh, he's really not that prognathic. Uh, his, jaw, his jaw clearly sticks out much more than ours does. Um, it's a pretty good angle, but it's not something we see in other hominins. His nose, his face is pretty flat. Um, it's really in the mouth where we see those big differences. And again, with the sagittal crest and how the muscles attach. Now, I want to reiterate that this was found in 400 pieces. 400! Talk about a jigsaw puzzle. And they had nothing to go off of. There was no front picture on the box to what this would look like. But due to their exquisite work, they were able to put this together into something recognizable that we have been able to study and learn from for decades. And I'm sure that Zinge has so much more to teach us as we find out more about his species. I hope you have learned a good deal and seen this awesome skull. If you've heard of him for the first time but haven't seen him, here's what he looks like. Some close-up shots. 
And I hope you've learned something about this awesome and amazing fossil. And again, I wanted to do this this week on Friday. I'm sorry it's coming out a little late today on Monday because Friday was the anniversary of Mary Leakey's passing. So I think it was important to show off one of her main and most exquisite discoveries and contributions to anthropology. So there you have it. There's Skulls with Seth. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please subscribe. I've got some awesome shirts down in the bottom. I'm going to be adding more soon. You can buy some of those to help support science, STEM, and my open access education. Make sure to follow along and hit that reminders button so you never miss a further video. All right, guys, that's it for this. I hope you had a great time. I hope you learned something. And remember, there's always more to learn. See you next time.